Welcome back to uh, Fire Pro uh, with the mods on. Because we can tell by the music. <laughs> yeah, uh, because uh, Sasha actually came up with an idea for a Royal Rumble, and I was like, "That sounds great, and we should do it." Because it's actually pretty different. Because we usually don't do like like real people. Yeah, events with like real historical basis behind it. Uh, I feel like you can explain it better than I can. So. We were watching this video the other day because, you know, we were we were staying at home and just kind of pissing away time. It was talking about, like, phantom champions, like wrestlers who were champions but got erased from records and stuff like that. And in one part of the video, he also talked about phantom Royal Rumble winners, like people who were, like, in the Rumble but got eliminated before they could get to the ring. <laughs> and so we just did research on, like, you know, people that that happened to and then just kind of extended it to people who got like injured before a Royal Rumble and couldn't participate and people who were advertised for Rumble but never actually appeared uh, so this is kind of uh, kind of their redemption almost kind of yeah. yeah Ty Dillinger and Curtis Axel are on that list yeah uh, or Michael McGillicuddy as I uh, as I just know him now uh, so yeah, um, that would amount to about 26 total. Uh, we erased one because there are some people in here that are kind of jerks. Uh, then there's one that is just, uh, we're not going to mention them, <laughs> let's say. Uh, the most we'll say is the one dude is a neo-Nazi. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that just says enough. Yeah, I mean, Ultimate Warrior was kind of a jerk, but he was never, like, white supremacist jerk. That uh, we're aware of. Yeah. Uh, but with that being said, uh... Yeah, one of the Harris brothers. I actually found out that they were in the NWO, which is a shame. <laughs> they were uh, also creative control. That is even more of a shame. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, with that, uh, I think we pretty much got stuff set up. Um, we're gonna be using Tracy Stage from Battle Raid Edition in URA, or Yura, uh, and Kodo from Yu Yu Hawk Show is gonna be roughing this. Um, also, random music works again, so I kind of, uh, I kind of buffed up the uh, music selection this time. And we're gonna start with, uh... Oh, by the way, uh, Andre the Giant, Dilo Brown, and Bam Bam Bigelow are official Fire Pro versions. So, I think Randy Savage... I kind of figured by the Andre one, because that looked like... like an actual edit from the games. Yeah. Uh, Randy is, like, I think mostly an official. They just, like, made him not suck. Because from what I heard, his official Fire Pro version was like bizarrely underpowered. To be fair, that might have been based on like WCW Randy Savage, which was like he, he didn't do terribly great there. Nah, maybe. I mean, this is the same series that had China with blonde hair because she was she wore that like for two seconds in Japan. She was in New Japan for like a hot, for like five seconds and a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, Bam Bam's coming out first. Okay, well. Uh, yeah, this is one of the new arenas, by the way. I forget if we showed this one before. And Kodo's going to be wildly out of place here. <laughs> what the hell is this music? I don't think I've ever heard this one before. It is just one of the default game themes. Why is Randy Savage the never open weight champion? Right, I forgot that I was messing with title belts a while back, and Randy Savage apparently was a champion at one point. Does that mean this is for that title, too? Uh, I didn't set it, but... And uh, we're starting with House of the Dead 1 music, because there is a part of this track that really mystifies me. Uh, because it uses a 
It samples a Dutch band from 1992 and also the Space Shuttle incident. I'm not really sure what either of those has to do with House of the Dead, but there you go. And so, um, I don't actually know why any of these people are here. Uh, even remember why, uh, Randy and Bam Bam are here? Um... I think Bam Bam was a case of advertised, but then left for ECW before the Rumble. Uh, Randy Savage just, like, no-showed a Royal Rumble one year. Oh. That yeah, might have been around the time he left for WCW, but we can't remember. Huh. I have this part. It, it's just... It's very strange for House of the Dead, I'll just say that much. Uh, oh, by the way, stream, how's the audio? There's a lot to, a lot of, a lot to keep track of. Um, but yeah, the King of Fighters sound effects. Uh, they've been there since uh, a while <laughs> at this point. I just never changed them. Cause... It's good to have them back, though. Yeah. They make everything sound much more brutal. You're looking at the real deal now. So what was, uh, oh, game audio slightly loud? Alright, uh, I'll, I'll turn it down so Uh, Delo's, Delo's case. It was him and also Chaz. I don't know if you got him on the list. Uh, yeah, I have, I have Chaz on here. Okay, both Delo and Chaz were originally, like, supposed to be in the 2001 Royal Rumble. Because they were both in a stable called, like, Lowdown. And the stable's leader, Tiger Ali Singh, let that sing in for a second. Uh, he was asked to pick either D'Lo or Chaz to be in the Rumble. And by the time he was finally ready to make his decision, Vince was like, now we gave your spot to somebody else. Drew Carey. Ah. <laughs> okay, so I saw a bit of... I, I, I remember seeing a bit where they did a sketch about that. Which, uh... You know, I don't mind who's lying in wrestling. I mean... You know, if you look at Melly first, it's pretty much proof I don't. Uh, that is a dumb way of doing it. <laughs> Not like how they did the Drew Carey bit, I'm just, like, what they had to do to get him there. Also, let it be known, I actually was considering, like, Royal Rumble, like, run-ins on this list. But figured that might have bloated things a little too much, because that happens a lot. Eh. I, I, this should be easy. Lana, who is somebody I'm only vaguely familiar with, honestly. Uh, Lana's case was, I believe, 2019 Royal Rumble. Uh, she was originally supposed to come out. I guess she got injured before the event, but like, her, it was kayfabe injured, I think, and gave her spot to Becky Lynch. Huh. I hope it's kayfabe, because... Uh... Uh, but I mean, yeah, I think it was kayfabe, because the person who was actually injured that year will be here later. Ah. And regarding Tiger Ali, uh, there is actually an official Aki version of him that's only in one game. Uh, so... There's a couple of people that were only in the first virtual pro wrestling that never... Uh... Oh, gee! That's what it was, I, I think. Uh... I get them mixed up. Which one's the older one? Uh, Tiger Jeet's the older one. Okay, Tiger Jeet, yeah, that's who I meant. By the way, I looked up pictures of that guy, because I'm already vaguely familiar with him. There's no way that man is, like, in his mid-70s. There's just no way. Uh, but yeah, like, the first Spritzer Pro Wrestling had, like, Dick Fry in it? It's... Selection's pretty amazing, honestly. Oh, that's how you pronounce that. Yeah, I only kn knew of it because Lord Mo posted uh, the Japanese promo where he did Katakana, they, uh, they called him Dick Fly. Also, uh... I kept pronouncing it as Dick Freeze all these years. <laughs> uh, so Spike Dudley, the original giant killer! Uh, I think his was another case. His, he is actually one of the cases of was coming out, got, like, beaten up by a wrestler who was leaving, and then never actually got to enter. 
Also, Spike, he just screams like a Garf to me. If he was like less family friendly, I guess. It feels like that's part of the intent. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Even Lana was like, man, it's uh. I keep reading also that his full name is Little Spike Dudley, and his finisher is The Acid Drop. <laughs> also, by pure coincidence, Tracy's thing just started playing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, The Acid Drop was, uh, would be the name of his finisher. Huh. is so strange. <laughs> Also, um, fun fact about Bam Bam here, uh, this is actually an alternate outfit. His official Fire Pro edit is, uh, you wouldn't guess it was Bam Bam because there's, like, no fire design on him. Also, Borg Might be Bam based Bam on his, uh, like, ECW time, man. Probably. Also, Savage is not eliminated, uh, due to the way Rumble's work with his mod now. For some reason, I uh, think... I think uh, that a Ginger Pimpernel creation uh, showed it. Um, if you have them lung out by anything, there's a, there's a glitch where like one of the starting entrances is eliminated before they even uh, get to the ring, which is only appropriate for this thing. <laughs> so basically, the big bug fix is they have to actually be eliminated in a traditional method. Pretty much, yeah. So Ludwig Borgo, who I believe is in Fight Zone. That somehow would and would not surprise us. <laughs> That's not one of them. Uh, Ludwig, Borger, Ludwig Borger's case, I believe, is just advertised for Rumble, did not appear. <laughs> yeah, he's too busy filming Fight Zone. <laughs> uh... I kind of wish Bo was here to, like, confirm for sure that he's the guy in the fight zone because I might have him mixed up with somebody else, but I'm pretty sure it's him. Oh yeah, uh, variable strike length is in the game, which is why a lot of them are going on longer than they should. Bam Bam doing the death mask throw there. Obviously, with that space, though. And. I think about, like. Oh, he did? Oof. Um. <laughs> maybe, uh. Maybe we should have gotten this guy out, too, then. Well, at least he's in early. Yeah. Bloody rage music started playing. Okay. He's also dead. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I'm really hoping it's not the actual fight zone now. <laughs> ECW guys just have expected them to just like go up in flames. But... Love outside the ring. <laughs> bam bam out. Bam bam out. <laughs> uh, the order after the first day they're completely randomized, so who knows? Uh, Andre, I believe. Originally advertised for Rumble, retired from wrestling before the Rumble happened. Ah. Because <laughs> okay. that was around the point where he was just getting, like, damn near immobile. Yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> Bam Bam was the guy who threw Spike in the audience back in ECW. Huh. Well, interesting how they were both in here. Andre, I don't know, has made any appearances on our stream outside of really weird ads. 
He might have shown up in Flame Edition, but we've done like several streams of that, so I can't really remember. <laughs> yeah, there's something about these SMK sound effects sometimes. Oh, Macho Man's out. I guess that's the closest thing to D-Lo's uh, head wobble there. Will do. Yeah, with Andre, I was actually curious what the case was, because considering what I've heard about him, it could be one of many reasons. Uh, because my guess was he was too hungover to show up. this? Oh, it's the Space Ghost thing! <laughs> That's I mean, a very interesting thing to just throw in there. I think it was used for one of the Asmaze characters. Yay! <laughs> Leave and never come back. <laughs> I mean, we've had, uh, we had Randy Savage here, so I guess there is a Space Ghost connection. <laughs> Dilo's will are willing to party to the break of dawn. Urgh. Ow. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching a lot of the uh, Def Jam Fight for New York uh, playthrough from my uh, giant bomb. I gotta say, that game has a disturbing amount of getting dropped in the fucking head. Yeah, that's how we remember. Yeah. A lot of that game's specials are surprisingly hard to look at. Just <laughs> thinking about Redman's. Yeah. And also, uh... Of course, Ice Tease, which I think they nicknamed the Tank Kick. <laughs> yeah, listen to this theme. No, no wonder Melt Banana had, like, a music cameo in one of their episodes. <laughs> Uh, Nails, another advertised but never appeared case. Yeah, he's too busy being in jail. Because that was a joke. I mean, I've, I've learned that, like, Van Hammer is still in jail, so... This was a hell of a thing to find out. <laughs> This is Doomsday Warrior music? Uh, not that theme that you either hate or love. Uh, what's that? It's a very polarizing little piece of music. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's <an> Andre just <laughs> Alright, Alicia Fox, who, again, I'm vaguely familiar with. Alicia Fox is a... Is an, she's an ex-WWE wrestler. Uh, uh, was always known for being relatively okay, but never, like... Or over. Uh, her most notable achievement was after spending like I think nearly a decade in WWE, finally getting a shirt after like eight years of tenure. Huh. And, uh, and it was of uh, it was of what what many people would describe as her persona. Oh right, right, right! I remember her now. Uh, what was her reason for being here? Uh, 2019 Royal Rumble, uh, got injured before the show. Got replaced by Kyrie Sane. Huh. And also Nunzio here, who I don't think I know who he is. Uh, I think Nunzio's former, uh, like a former ECW guy, he used to be part of the FBI. Wait, was he, uh, oh. Lil Guido? Yes, I believe. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, don't remember which year it was, but one year he got his number stolen by Kurt Angle. <laughs> Fighters Impact music. Uh, yeah, seeing Lil Guido do a clothesline on Andre the Giant certainly is <laughs> make the same. <laughs> Andre out. D'Lo really putting in some work here. Ah, uh, British Bulldog. 
another advertised but never appeared. I think I think it, because around that time he had left for WW or for WCW. Yeah, he but was I can't another, remember. He was, a, he was another guy I always saw bounce around. He was in like a ton of things I don't. Uh, also, I mostly know him now for those Burger King commercials where he's just screaming at them for no reason. Do you want a free burger? Do you want a free burger? <laughs> That sounds about right. <laughs> and yeah, uh, in No Mercy, I think every single one of Bulldog's taunts is just in flexing, so... <laughs> you stopped that. Ah, the headbanger. I believe headbanger mosh. Actually, one of the cases of like assaulted on the way to the ring. Oh. That's a headbanger life. Or, or I think he's getting kind of full right now. I'm trying to remember if it was Mosh or Thrasher who ended up becoming Beaver Cleavage. My brain just kind of like shut down when he said that. Ash, have I never explained to you beaver cleavage? I don't think you have in any way. <laughs> so, for some reason or another, I think somewhere in the early aughts, they just decided to to have a wrestler named Beaver Cleavage, who was a send up. His entire gimmick was basically being like, leave it to Beaver, except having like a weird, a weird like Oedipus complex thing for his mom. And this wasn't WCW? No, this was WWE. This happened. Jesus. Uh, also, Scotty too hot in this game, right? Uh, Scotty, I think another assaulted on the way to the ring case. Oh, and the <laughs> Oh. I always get a little sad when I see Kamala, just knowing what's up with him. Uh, he was advertised, but but never showed up. Yeah, it's, uh, think about what happened to him, and also just kind of into it in general, honestly. Uh, fun fact, I only recently found out that the Kamala in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 is not the same guy. Really? Yeah, that's Kamala 2, apparently. Why is Clay Fighter music in here? <laughs> oh, right, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Beaver Cleavage being Russo, now somehow not surprising in hindsight. Yeah, I was like, that sounds very WCW. Yeah, it's like, oh, it kind of was. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of the Asma scenes are in here because she asked me to uh, upload those things, and I was like, alright, and they're just kind of here. Yeah. Now, so. But they're inoffensive, so. I'm all already bleeding. I believe we have Kamala to thank for having the star pattern in Firefly, so. Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> this is kind of nuts. Man, I don't. I can't think of Beaver Cleavage without our mind immediately also jumping to uh, Kerwin White. Kerwin White is amazing. <laughs> it's poorly timed. I think like wasn't it like shortly after that Eddie passed. Or? Yeah, like. I think he had maybe like one or two matches under the gimmick and then Eddie passed and it was just... Well, that's the end of that. Yeah, because honestly that gimmick was pretty fun. <laughs> uh, somebody got eliminated with oh, Kyle right, Mosh. And yet the spirit of Kerwin White lives on <laughs> in, modern w in modern WWE. Uh, for whom? Michael Cole. Ah. That's a dead dude. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that incredibly ominous sting, as I said, Michael Cole. <laughs>
Michael Cole's SNES theme. But, uh, no, he, he actually uses, uh, yeah, for some reason, by the way, the announcers have themes in WWE. That huh. you only really hear if you're, like, at the live shows. That's not my thing, That's my fucking music! But, uh, Michael Cole specifically uses Kerwin White's old theme. I've always had kind of like a weird soft spot for Dilo, even if he wasn't like a great booker. Uh, Dilo. He, I think he did booking. I think either TNA or WWE for a hot for a hot bit, and he had a very common tendency to use a lot of the same spots in matches, uh, in consecutive matches. Oh no! Uh, but... Oh, the test. Uh, and I can't... Oh wait, now I remember. Uh, he also got beaten up onto the way of the ring by Stone Cold huh. in a rumble. I believe that is the case. He, he didn't pass the test, though. Yeah, Tino is like a guy like I've only really seen him in game appearances. I don't know how he just seems likable, you know? Like, his theme is so cool in the movie, I gotta love it. Oh, he's, like, he's always kind of consistently been a pretty decent wrestler, just never really had like a lot of star power. Yeah, I can kind of say that at the same time. Oh, right, the DLC for uh, WWE All Star. Uh, Honky Tonk Man, I believe, advertised and never appeared. <laughs> he might have been jumping ship to WCW for like a hot minute at that time. I have no this, idea what this I think is. this is from Evolution Skateboarding, actually. Huh, I wonder why this is in here, though. Wait, check the... Oh, D-Lo, uh, Cameo, and Night Young Fire, interesting. This is obviously what Honky Tonk sounds like. <laughs> A fun fact, uh, wrestling, uh, in WrestleMania 2000 stream archive, it's still viewable, but it is no longer able to be monetized, thanks to real American. <laughs> also, Crush, who, uh, we've been seeing a lot of lately. I... I actually can't remember what happened with Crush. It might have been another announced but never appeared case. Yeah, it's actually can't Robert Banks or something. I like how in these bumpers there's one person that soldiers on for most of it. I'm, I'm glad it was you. Uh, out of curiosity, shortest time in Rumble so far. Oh, it, it oh no. Oh god, there's a lot happening. The other booger. Uh, Bastion booger. Advertised promo was actually one of. I got like actual like promos and stuff before the event. And then just never appeared. Though his is actually actually the only one they've given a kayfabe explanation for. He had indigestion. It happened to the best of us. <laughs> this theme is something. It's like almost menacing, but also. You're hearing somebody who seems to have, like, sleep apnea problems sleeping. It's... Fashion Booger or something. Ah, uh, Chaz, the other former headbanger. The other former headbanger, and, uh, the other half of Lowdown. Huh. How do 
think a lot of this is kind of weird and connected. Like, what was his deal? Like, uh... uh same deal as D-Lo. Was oh, one of the initial picks for, like, one of the numbers that was given eventually to, uh, Drew Carey. <laughs> because Tiger Ali Singh was too indecisive. That's depressing. And Chavo. Did I get the right one? Yes, that's that's the Chavo you're looking for, I believe. Okay. I cannot remember his case either. Some reason his head seems way smaller than anybody else's. I'm not sure why. Young rain starting to fill up a little bit. Oh, Guido! Really, uh... Yeah, he's, he's the hanger-on right now. <laughs> yeah. Out of all people. I don't know, it seems... seems well in character. <laughs> and they're still going. R-Truth just showed up. Uh, R-Truth, I believe, 2019 Rumble? Or 2019 Men's Rumble got knocked out by Nia Jax, who took his place. Again, it happens to the best of us. Street Fighter DX2. God, this is such... Like, I know we do rumbles all the time because they're very endlessly great. But it's funny how much, like... How much different this one is being just because there's like a reason they're all here. Like, just... Yeah, there's a reason they're here, they're all real people, like <laughs> when thing is lying. Well he he never uh he never negotiated a real rumble. I mean I could have counted Royal Rumble 2014 where everybody was hoping for him to show up and then didn't. Uh, they got dirt big buttons then. I almost I I, I should have like put laugh in here due to the mentality that he no shakes so much video games. <laughs> It sounded like there wasn't a WCW equivalent of the Royal Rumble, so I couldn't, like, have find any equivalents from there. <laughs> Why are there so many low blows all of a sudden? Did <laughs> you stop that? Booger's out. Story bomb. Yep. Chavo's out. How long is Chavo, man? Three minutes and 44 seconds. Making the shortest uh, entry yet. I mean, uh, the shortest time there in the ring, not like he's the shortest out of all. I think that award goes to Little Vito. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm half Italian, which may explain my height. Uh, who has the most eliminations so far, by the by? Uh, who had the most eliminations? Uh, Little Guido at four. Wow. <laughs> Just edging out the off. Oh, but yeah, fun fact, my mom's uh, side is very, you know, uh, she's the Italian. Uh, I think the most of her side of the family for sure. So, uh, I guess that's where I get that from. <laughs> Most of our mom's side of the family is, like, tall, so, like, that explains a lot. Yeah. Granted, we're not quite as ginormous as they are. <laughs> Everybody on one part of my mom's family is, like, seven feet tall. Jesus. What, why Tess did the music, all, sorry, the music got all sinister when Tess got eliminated? <laughs> and Archer. And 
truck. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and honky tonk. Damn, what is with Chaz and Guido? I'm not sure. They're they're on something right now. <laughs> Chaz is taking a bit. Buddy Rose. I have no idea who he is actually. <laughs> Uh, hey, I gotta look at our notes real quick. <laughs> Some of these cases kind of blend together, so like we don't. We had these at least sorted by like what their situation was. I gotcha. Also, yeah, Chaz uh, has the same number as Guido, but now he's coming from this elimination, so. Okay, Buddy Rose is in the advertised but never appeared column. Yeah, I'm not actually familiar who he is. Uh, he's the original Nature Boy. Hey, there's the man of the hour! Yeah, Michael McGillicuddy. He's the main in Portland Wrestling, which was the video he had as a jobber, and then he had the blow away weight powder. Uh, what was McGillicuddy's deal? Uh, McGillicuddy, probably one of the most famous. He got knocked out on the way to the ring. <laughs> but he was one of the few to actually make a deal out of it after people started pointing it out. Huh. Like, he had it as a whole gimmick going up to WrestleMania. Interesting. And then for some reason that got turned into a weird, uh, cosplaying as Hulk Hogan gimmick. Oh, right, right. I found out about that reason. Where he teamed up with uh, Damian Sandow, who cosplayed as a, uh, who cosplayed as Randy Savage. <laughs> and they were the Meta Powers. Interesting. And uh, Ty Dillinger, who I am very, very into. Uh, Ty Dillinger. Uh, his the reason he's in here. Ten, ten, no, no, no. 2018 Royal Rumble. He was supposed to come in at number ten. Got knocked out by Kevin Owens. Uh, his entire gimmick in WWE was 10. What? He, he, 10. He was the perfect 10. Oh, I see. I thought you just meant like he just screamed the number 10 a lot. <laughs> no, he did that too. Okay. You know, I like fighting vipers as that it has Sandman who's obsessed with the number 3. I thought that was just the case here with the number 10. Uh, Ultimate Warrior, advertised but never appeared. It's not a surprise, considering, uh, you know, Warrior. Yeah, it's the other jerk. <laughs> I mean, I, I was really hoping that, uh, you know, uh, just wrong playing outside of all would have counted, because that would have been great, but... He was too busy loading the spaceship with the rocket fuel. Yeah, to me, like, the only redeeming part of that man is the promos, because they're just nonsense. <laughs> That's like, you can just, like, oh, Finlay, or Finley. So, Finley has the most interesting story for why he's in here. He was disqualified from a Royal Rumble. For two particular reasons. One, he came in too early. And two, he used a weapon. And three, he was a bastard. This was the only time a disqualification has ever happened in a Royal Rumble. <laughs> uh, Finley here, I believe, is, uh... I don't know if he's explicitly based off of his, uh... Revenge incarnation. Probably, considering he's named Fit Finley here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Got the sounds in a way, so good. Oh, good old Finley. I like how I'm just talking about Bobby Lash, like said. <laughs> I just remember Alex Navarro uh, looking over the roster of WCW and W Revenge and it kind of skimmed over Finley saying, I don't know why he had a career. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he said some pretty harsh things about a lot of people. 
Oh, that is worse. Uh, Jazz is still here. Because <laughs> I remember... I remember him saying at first that Scott really sucked, but then he plays the game with Dying Game Riker, and he, he changed his opinion on that completely after he watched the Japan stuff. Which, I've seen a couple matches, I totally understand. Scott Norton is such a weird case, because he just... He didn't do shit in WCW, and so you would be honest to look at him and think like, man, what's his deal? And then you watch him in New Japan, it's like, oh, that's his deal. His deal is that he's completely terrifying. There was one here actually showed up at like a Wrestle Kingdom for like one of their pre-show rumbles. And like, he was still chugging pretty good, honestly. <laughs> that's good to hear. I hear he's still raring to go, too, from what I read. He seems like the kind of guy who'd, like, totally wouldn't mind a sporadic appearance now and then, but probably could do, like, a full-time career. Yeah, I seems so. I think I remember, uh, most recently, there was, like, a wrestling headquarters, like, pretty much across the street from him. And his response was like, you know, I'm still good to go, I'm pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, Spectre kind of sums it up pretty decently. When he was New Japan World Champion, he was a jobber in the NWO. Cool. Imagine, like, being in that position. I'm tired now. Just like, I'm a champion, but they keep jobbing the shit out of me over here. Like... Also, I believe this is our final four. Oh, yeah. I hope Warrior doesn't win. <laughs> I'm putting all my chips on the Gilly Cuddy. <laughs> it's his genesis, I swear. Plus, his has just did a bump. <laughs> a little bit of a holdover from from his uh, headbanger days. <laughs> that was a Death Valley driver. Do the perfect box on him. The only time he does not. <laughs> I like that we're just refusing to call him Curtis Axel. <laughs> it's still just the most phenomenally baffling thing that, like, they ne almost never once in his career went with the gimmick of, hey, he's the son of Curtis Axel. Yeah, really. Also, appropriate theme here is Kyrie's theme for the X2. <laughs> Sounds pretty close to Mr. Perfect's theme. <laughs> Kyrie was an interesting gimmick for Mr. Perfect and never really thought. Oh, damn it! <laughs> okay, uh, Finley then. Warrior Shuttle. He's like super tired, naturally. <laughs> But like the music has been like super appropriate in like in so many ways. There goes Funly. Uh, okay, uh, Chaz. I am angry. He seems to keep forgetting this is a Royal Rumble. Yeah, Chaz won. Chaz wins. <laughs> Interesting, uh, <laughs> interesting conclusion there. Huh. Of all the people, it's Chaz. Chaz, most eliminations with eight people. Uh, he has eliminated Test, R-Truth, Honky Tonk Man, Lil Guido, Ty Dillinger, McGillicuddy, Fit Finley, an ultimate warrior. That's a hell of a conclusion there. Also, I like no entry one nine 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 there. I love their work. So it descended quicker than we thought. Yeah, that <laughs> That's kinda what I was uh thinking. Uh let me hit turn off recording and then just separate into an exhibition thing now.